65 dollars that's insane i bet i can make a better one for a lot cheaper the panel itself is only 17 dollars which i'm pretty sure costs less than a dollar to make but it's much better than 65. anyways this bad boy just came in the mail with some messy code and a few sparks later we have some flashing red lights that brings us one step closer to our final goal we can now extract all of minecraft's textures from the source files and load them into our led matrix but as you can see, without a proper diffuser, the panel doesn't look very good. I can barely tell that this is a furnace. However, when we diffuse the light with a piece of paper, the colors come through much clearer. To make a proper diffuser, I will first take some measurements of the LEDs and 3D print a test fit. It is important to make sure that there is enough clearance for the resistors and the soldered portions of the LED. The model is pretty simple. I first extruded a box, made a cut for the resistor, and another cut for the soldered contact points. Our next step is to convert this model into 3D printer instructions. I will do this using Cura Slicer. Now you can see each layer that the 3D printer will print. Load this into the 3D printer and now we wait. This 2x2 piece alone is estimated to take 12 minutes. It takes 64 of these 2x2 pieces to make the full 16x16 16 16 grid. So the math already shows that the next print may take longer than 12 hours, so I'm excited for that. Now that we have our 2x2 two two piece printed, we can do a test fit to make sure that it sits flush with the LED matrix and that the diffuser works as expected. I say this very rarely, but it actually worked on the first try. I was super happy to see this. The diffuser was able to block out any light from other pixels and also provide a uniform color for each pixel. This is exactly what I wanted. I think it's time to print the full 16x16 16 16 diffuser. A few hours into the print, I got a bit worried because I saw a lot of stringing on the infill of the diffuser. I thought that this could cause future layers to not form properly, but since I was already a few hours into the print, I decided to just let it finish. Luckily, everything looks like it printed alright. Now it's time to do a final test fit. Not gonna lie, I think this looks pretty awesome. Does this earn a subscribe? If not, well, I'm gonna take it up a notch and create an app to control the LEDs. First step is to create a basic site that renders each texture. Then we can add some names to each block and finally add a search bar. Currently, clicking on these blocks does nothing. Let's change that. Now I can search for diamond blocks. When I click on a block, a notification appears on the top right of the screen. I can also search for gold and when I click those items, notifications also appear. Also, since this is a web app, I can access all of its features on my phone. I can tap on an item I want to display on the LED panel, but currently, the website is not connected to the LED matrix. To fix this, we need to send over the texture data through Wi-Fi. When the matrix receives a message, it takes the texture data and loads it into its display. So now, I can click on a furnace, I can click on a jack-o-lantern, I can click on a TNT top, and also I can click on a rose bush. And all of these things are updated onto the LED panel. And with the power of editing, I can press hours of work into just a few seconds. You're welcome. And that about wraps up the video. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing, sharing, and commenting down below. It's the best way you can help me. Thank you so much.